consoles and PCs. That's how gaming has been traditionally done. You buy a console, you expect several years of gaming and support from it, usually five years at the very least. PCs, on the other hand, require upgrades through their lifespans in order to achieve peak performance. Well, it looks like consoles are now being subjected to the same strategy we've been seeing with PCs. Sony is moving in that exact direction with its latest console, the PlayStation 4 Pro, which is a redesigned and upgraded model that'll cost you $400. While we'd love to go into detail about every single thing that the PS4 Pro improves over the original console, we're going to instead focus on any meaningful differences with its performance with the PlayStation VR. We gotta get the hell out of here. Come on. Now when it comes to its design, it's slightly larger than the original model. Luckily it's not a substantial amount of heft, but it'll still occupy a little bit more space. The angular, industrial-esque design now features a three-level tiered cutout on its facade, as opposed to the two-level one used by the original. The other new changes to the PS4 Pro's design includes three USB 3.1 ports, where one of them is placed in the rear of the console, and a newer HDMI 2.0 port for output at 4K resolutions. Obviously, the design language remains intact, but we're a little bit irked about how the designers did not take into consideration the PSVR. Yes, we appreciate the extra USB port in the rear to attach the PSVR's processing unit, but it would have been far more logical to perhaps somehow integrate or even incorporate it into the body, make it more discreet as opposed to having a jungle of wires going in and out of the console. What's a bit strange is that Sony has been rather coy about the specifics regarding improvements, if there are any at all, with the PSVR running on the PS4 Pro. It remains unknown if there are any, but given the performance boost accompanying the console, it's a safe assertion that the PSVR would natively benefit from all of it. So does it really have a viable improvement over the standard PS4? First and foremost, there's no improvement to the resolution, seeing that the display in the headset is still 1080p. That's not going to change at all, obviously. So from a visuals perspective, it's practically the same as what we get when using the standard PS4. What's really intriguing though is frame rate, and as we know, it impacts the overall experience. Anything below 60 frames per second, or choppiness or inconsistencies in general, can become problematic in the VR world. Those prone to motion sickness are apt to suddenly feel nauseous after playing for a short time. Well, we're glad to report that motion sickness isn't much of a concern here with the PS4 Pro. In fact, it seems to be less problematic. We got sick quickly playing Riggs Mechanized Combat League, but this time on the PS4 Pro, we didn't feel sick at all. That's surprising in so many ways, just because we felt that the frame rate was smooth and consistent with the original PS4 already. So who's to say that it's improved? They talk heavily about frame rate in VR, how that could really affect motion sickness. But when I played Riggs and other games on the PS4, uh, comparing to this, I'm not noticing a whole lot of difference through the headset in terms of the frame rates. Actually, they're both very smooth. There's not even, I don't recall coming across a game or experience with the PSVR where, the chop, where there's a lot of choppiness with the performance. And moving over to the PS4 Pro, again, it's very subtle. There might be a speed boost in terms of the uh, actual frame rate, but I don't notice it. But overall, I'm not getting sick, which is the best part about it. Other games where we felt sick after some play didn't seem to phase us at all here with the PS4 Pro either. All this leads us to say that the PSVR experience here is improved, despite the lack of any noticeable difference in terms of the frame rate. The tracking too seems to be no different. Given how we're not feeling queasy playing through the same games that got us sick beforehand, it leads us to believe there might be a combination of things behind the scenes that contribute to the better experience. We appreciate the end result since getting sick is never fun. And probably the last thing that's going to come to mind is going to be the price because that's going to justify whether or not you're going to go with the PS4 Pro or just save the money and stick with the PlayStation 4. Right now, you can find various bundles for the original PS4 selling for around the $250 range, 
which comes with some other goodies in addition to just the console itself. Now that means you'll have to shell out another $150 to pick up the PS4 Pro at its price of $400. The difference is substantial to say the least, but it does come with some added benefits in the process. However, if we were to look at it strictly from the VR side, the only main advantage going with it is that we're not getting sick playing through some of the PSVR's intensive games. The end result is that we're not getting sick, and that's a good thing. Now, skeptics will be reluctant to shell out the extra money for the PS4 Pro, but when immersiveness is integral in bringing virtual reality to life without having to worry about getting sick in the process, it's definitely something worth musing about. If you haven't dove into the PSVR yet and currently deciding between the two systems, then you're better off just forking over the extra cash and getting the PS4 Pro. Granted, it's going to be more out of your pocket now, but it means you'll be able to experience VR much longer without the downtime caused by motion sickness. Yes, there is a price increase in going with the PS4 Pro, but there are also some benefits why you should go with it, especially when it comes to the virtual reality experience. So if you guys want to learn more about the Sony PlayStation 4 Pro, you can check out our website, VR Source, your source for all kinds of reality.